Hello Blueberries, Elotho here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have the first of 9 armor videos, starting off with the Australian Defense Forces. If you want to be kept up to date with these videos, you might want to consider subscribing and setting notifications to all. In these videos we will be looking at all the different armored vehicles of every faction. This includes their armor values and placements, their acceleration and top speed, gun sights and how to read them, every usable seat and some general information about the vehicles. We are starting off with a short explanation about the different armor values. For cohesion we will be using the armor values and colors that you can find on the Jensen's training range. OWI's info board indicates that red armor is the weakest of all the armor, only holding up against small arms fire. Orange armor is slightly better than red armor, but still doesn't offer much protection. Yellow armor has average strength, but is vulnerable to AT rockets. Yellow armor and below can be penetrated with 50 cal and above. Next up we have green armor, which can only be damaged by multiple high explosive projectile hits. And finally blue armor, which can only be penetrated by MBT, AP rounds, ATGMs or multiple head hits. For a more in-depth explanation of the different armor types, head over to the Steam Guides and look for Vehicle Armor Guide version 3 by Keystone. We will also be referencing a workshop mod called Vehicle Training 9.3, whose author's name translates to I am cannon fodder, according to Google Translate. This mod offers charts for the different armor thickness of every armor piece. While OWI's models show IFVs and MBTs both having blue rated armor, the actual armor ratings seem to differ. The M1A1's blue rated turret armor for example have a thickness of 600mm, while the blue rated front armor plate of the SLAV have a thickness of only 30mm. I assume that OWI's color ratings are meant for comparison in the vehicle's respective categories. The mod's armor values are being confirmed by a Google Sheet doc I found, which will be linked in the description, together with the guide and the mod. With that out of the way, let's have a look at the armor values and weak points of the Australian Defense Forces, starting off with the M1A1 main battle tank. The backside of the M1A1 is comprised exclusively of red armor. So if you are to engage this MBT from the rear, it doesn't really matter where you hit it. I would still advise to go for the engine block, which is located in between the tracks and the turret. Coming around to the right side of the MBT, we have the choice of either engaging the red rated side armor of the turret or the turret ring itself. If the turret is turned so you are not able to hit the back, you can shoot at the yellow rated middle portion or the back portion of the side armor. Lastly, we have the blue rated front turret armor and the front side skirt that make up part of the 30 degree front protection of the M1A1. If you are presented with attacking the side of this MBT, your best bet is to go for the m -rack which is located right under the turret, above the third and the fourth wheel from the back. It is rather small, so you should try to hit it with your opening shot. Here you can see the mod's armor value superimposed on the Jensen's model. The colors were changed to match the Jensen's scheme. Changing over to the front, we can see the red rated turret ring again. The only yellow armor is the commander scope, the spare track roller and the mantle of the main gun. The top front armor consists of green rated armor. Lastly we have the bottom front armor, the turret sides and the track skirts which are all rated blue. From the front you are also able to hit the ammo rack, which is located below the right half of the driver's hatch. 
getting reliable hits on this is still a gamble, so going for either the turret ring or the mantle of the main gun is your best bet. Here you can see the mod's armor value superimposed on the Jensen's model. The colors were changed to match the Jensen's scheme. Next up we have the acceleration and the top speed of the M1A1 on off-road and on-road terrain. Weight and top speed of the real-world counterpart are 62 tons with 60 km on the road and 40 km cross-country. As you can see, the in-game M1A1 exceeds the real-world off-road speed by 29 km per hour, giving it a top speed of 69 km per hour, which it reaches in roughly 40 seconds. On the road, the real-world top speed is also bested by the in-game performance and it settles in at around 79 km per hour and 44 seconds to reach it. The driver has a field of view of about 180 degrees, which gives him the opportunity to better navigate the environment and to help with spotting potential threats and targets. The main gun has an elevation of plus 20 degrees and a depression of minus 10 degrees, and the turret rotates a full 360 degrees in about 9 seconds making it easy to stay on target and to not get janked due to the driver making abrupt turns. The standard side picture of the M1A1 has a variety of information for the gunner. The current armor type as well as the loading status is displayed on the bottom left corner. The ranging dot and the readout in meters are found in the middle and the bottom of the screen. Gun stabilization as well as the turret and command seat orientations can be found at the right side. The bottom right corner has the remaining ammo count as well as the current ammo type. On the 1x zoom there is only a changed crosshair but no other new elements. The 2x zoom has a manual rangefinder which is operated by fitting the top and bottom lines to the silhouette of the target. Furthermore, there are fixed points to indicate where the gunner needs to be aiming for a certain target distance. The KEW A2 or simply AP rounds are your main ammunition against other MBTs, IFVs, and APCs. Jensen's jankiness aside, the rounds land right on the target indicator.
Changing over to the heat rounds, the 2x zoom compensates the ranging for the slower muscle velocity of the rounds and the higher drop. As with the AP rounds, the heat lands right on the target indicator. These rounds can be used against the backside of MBTs, any armor on IFVs and APCs and anything below. They are also great for dealing with infantry. The coax side changes the ranging again, leaving us with an 800 meter max. Trying to shoot targets over that range is guesswork and requires tracer hits to land an accurate shot. On the command seat, the player has control of the 50 cal machine gun turret, which is located on top of the main turret. This is useful for engaging enemy infantry at close range, or even damaging or destroying APCs and IFVs. The seat is lacking a rangefinder, so the commander can only range targets for the gunner if he's also the squad lead. If both gunner and commander have their stabilization activated, the hunter-killer capability can be used. The intended use of this is that while the gunner, the killer, is busy dealing with one target, the commander, the hunter, can acquire the next target to engage. By pressing spacebar, the commander can slew the gunner onto his side and let him engage the new target. Vice versa, the gunner can slew the commander onto his side by pressing the same key. The gunner can also press E to slow himself onto the commander's view. The movement range of the turret is 360 degrees, which makes it the tank's most vital survival instrument. Tank crews should always include a player in the command seat, to compensate for the limited view of both driver and gunner. We continue with the Aslav IFV, which is a modified version of the LAV-25. This IFV can hold three crewmen and eight dismounts. The backside of the Aslav is comprised exclusively of red armor, so if you are to engage this IFV from the rear, it doesn't really matter where you hit it. Unlike the M1A1, the Aslav has its engine in the front, so you cannot disable it from the rear. Coming around to the right side of the IFV, we can engage the red-rated side armor of the turret, which will disable it after a few hits and prevent it from fighting back. As with the M1A1, the turret ring is visible just below the turret and can be engaged to disable the turret quicker. Depending on the elevation, you might also be able to hit some of the top armor layer. The body side armor of the Aslav is comprised exclusively of orange-rated armor. Destroying any of the middle tires will lead to the Aslav being crippled and slowing it down to a 10 km per hour crawl. Here you can see the mod's armor value superimposed on the Jensen's model. The colors were changed to match the Jensen's scheme. Changing over to the front, we can choose to engage the red-rated side plates of the turret or a small portion of the frontal armor. We are also able to engage the turret ring, which is just below the turret. The middle of the turret, as well as most of the frontal armor, is comprised of orange-rated armor. The lower front portion has the only blue-rated parts of the Aslav, which seem to have weld on triangles as additional armor in all four corners. As previously stated, the engine is on the left front side facing the Aslav, so shooting the orange-rated armor to disable it and potentially blinding the gunner with the engine smoke is a good tactic. 
Here you can see the mod's armor value superimposed on the Jensen's model. The colors were changed to match the Jensen's scheme. Next up we have the acceleration and the top speed of the SLF on off-road and on-road terrain. Weight and top speed of the real-world counterpart are 13.2 tons with 100 km per hour on the road and 10 km per hour in the water. As you might have noticed, I was not able to find a top speed for off-road terrain. As you can see, the ASLAF has an in-game off-road top speed of 45 km per hour, which is reached in 29 seconds. The on-road top speed is in excess of the 90 km per hour speedometer limit, but falls short of the 100 km real-world top speed. This top speed is reached in 48 seconds. The driver has a field of view of about 180 degrees, which gives him the opportunity to better navigate the environment and to help with spotting potential threats and targets. The turret mount allows for a 60 degree elevation and a 8 degree depression, and the turret rotates a full 360 degree in about 7 seconds, making it easy to stay on target and fight infantry in tight streets during a drive-by. The standard side picture of the ASLAF has a variety of information for the gunner. The current ammo type as well as the ammo count is displayed in the top left, the range in reticle and the readout in meters are found in the middle and the top of the screen. Gun stabilization as well as the turret and command seat orientations can be found at the top right. The 1x zoom has fixed points that indicate where the gunner needs to be aiming for a certain target distance. However, you have to aim a bit to the left to actually get a hit on your target. This is likely due to the optics of the main gun being located to the left of the barrel. The M919 or simply AP rounds are your main ammunition against other IFVs, APCs and the backside of MBTs. MK210 or simply HE rounds are being used against unarmored vehicles, emplacements and halves and infantry. As you can see, there is no range indication for the coax, so you need to take a few test shots to see where the rounds land in relation to your target.
On the command seat, the player has control over a scope with a rangefinder to assist in detecting incoming threats and targets. As with the M1A1, the command seat is equipped with a hunter-killer capability. The movement range of the scope is 120 degrees and is thereby limited to the front of the turret. Next up, we have the Bushmaster Protected Mobility Vehicle, or simply PMV. The backside of the PMV is comprised exclusively of orange armor, so if you are to engage this vehicle from the rear, you can hit it wherever you want. Like the SLAV, the PMV has its engine in the front, so you cannot disable it from the rear. Coming around to the right side of the vehicle, we can engage the red-rated windows and possibly hit the passengers in the process. The rest of the side armor of the PMV is compressed exclusively of orange-rated armor. Here you can see the mod's armor values superimposed on the Jensen's model. Changing over to the front, we can choose to engage red-rated windows again. On the RWS version, the gunner is to the right and shooting him will make the VIG unable to defend itself. The front portion of the PMV is comprised of orange-rated armor. As previously stated, the engine is in the middle front of the PMV, so shooting the orange-rated armor to disable it is a good tactic. As before, the colors were changed to match the Jensen scheme. Next up, we have the acceleration and the top speed of the PMV on off-road and on-road terrain. This 4x4 armored vehicle can carry up to 10 troops into battle. Weight and top speed of the real-world counterparts are 12.5 tons with 100 km per hour cruise speed on the road. As with the SLAV, I was not able to find a top speed for off-road terrain. As you can see, the PMV has an in-game off-road top speed of 67 km per hour, which it reaches in about 45 seconds. While this is a guide to Australian armor, Squad could not help but to sneak in some Eldritch Horrors. I cannot be 100% certain that we stayed on the road, but the 119 km top speed indicates that we did. This exceeds the 100 km per hour real world top speed and is reached in 1 minute and 7 seconds. The driver has a field of view of about 180 degrees, which gives him the ability to navigate Squad's varied landscapes with ease. The top-mounted Mac 58 has its iron sights zeroed at 300 meters and is mainly useful for close fire support. Anything above 500 meters is hard to see and requires you to make use of the tracers to hit. There's two more back-mounted Mac 58s on this version of the PMV.
The single Mac 58 version only has the one front gun. The last in-game version has an RWS mounted on top. This includes stabilization, a 3-level zoom, a rangefinder and an ammo counter. The elevation of the turret is 45 degrees and the depression is minus 10. At 3 times zoom, the indicator lines move in 100 meter increments from the upside down T at 100 meters to 500 meters. The optics are located to the right of the barrel, so you need to aim with the left side of the target lines. If you want to hit anything above 500 meters, you need to guesstimate again and use the tracer rounds for guidance. From a cold start, you can fire 61 rounds till the gun overheats. This concludes my guide on all Australian armor. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching. Making this video took me a lot of time, so if you liked it, please hit the like button and maybe subscribe to stay up to date for part 2. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to drop them in the comment section. That's all I have for you today. Again, thanks for watching and have a nice day.